you in future directions and in future situations that you may encounter. You're always going to be using your mission statement as a sounding board to new ideas or opportunities or perhaps things that you may be wondering if it's something that you should do or definitely not be associated with. So for example, the mission that we have here at From the Ground Up is that we bring clarity to business and we help entrepreneurs build brands that impact the world from the ground up. Now, that's essentially the mission that we have throughout our content, throughout the products, the education, and everything that we do online. It truly is the guiding star of what we try to do. And of course, it came with years of trying to develop that mission statement. It didn't come overnight, but we started with something. Now, the mission statement is your guiding star. It's what you're going to be truly reflecting on what opportunities or things you should be doing, as well as the ways that you're going to communicate to your customers and to your team. Now, for us, <coughs> with From the Ground Up, our mission statement was that. It was to bring clarity to business and help entrepreneurs build brands that impact the world from the ground up. And as we started working on a product drop, we knew that we needed it to be educational as well as impactful in how we moved forward with the products that we were going to create. It couldn't be something that was just done for the sake of doing it. It had to have a purpose and a reason. And because of that, we knew that the products that needed to be brought forward were going to be things that brought clarity to business, to the life of an entrepreneur, and not only brought education, but also motivation. And that's the reason why our product line still relates to the mission as a company as a whole. The mission is still the <coughs> guiding star to how we're going to move forward, even though we're going to educate through a different medium, which is fashion and planners and things that are going to help you on a day-to-day. -day. So you may be consuming content right now on YouTube or you may be a part of our academy, but now you're going to have a physical product line and a thing that will continue to remind you on a day-to-day -day basis why it is that you're starting and doing what you're doing. Another part of the business plan that's going to be key for you to truly focus on and think about is the goals that you're going to set for the next year, two years, and three years minimum. You heard that right, guys. You're going to have to plan for three years. Now, now, if you're watching this, chances are you're not, you're not really a planner, but this business plan will get you into the movement of starting to make plans and truly looking at yourself on a month-to-month, -month, week week-by-week basis on how close you're getting to those goals. So for us, as part of the FTGU merch line, we created goals that included over the next year, we want to be at 120000 in revenue, which would break down to doing 10000 in sales a month. The other part of the goal that we needed to have is it needed to be a low-touch option, meaning it couldn't be something that we were spending a lot of time on, but it had to be something that was super impactful to our community. It yep. was something that brought value, that helped educate them, and more importantly, move them forward. So we're not just creating a product line to just go out there and print a bunch of slogans and designs. We're being very thoughtful into how we're moving about this because we want it to be a low-touch option so we can focus on the person wearing the product. And then it's easy to kind of create a one-year goal. A one-year plan is something that you can pursue. A year goes by really fast, right? But when you start to, you know, expand that into three years, it could be a little bit convoluted and it might not make as much sense. But as long as you stick to the mission and to the purpose of your brand, you'll be able to work those goals again. So for us, the three-year goal is for the brand to do over a million in revenue. And more importantly, expand the product collections to drop on a seasonal basis with an expanded product line. So that means that we're not only going to focus on garments and t-shirts and planners, but we're going to expand into very specialized equipment and products that entrepreneurs and business owners need. So that becomes our business plan, essentially. I mean, there's a lot of, diff there's a lot of different details in there in terms of the marketing plan and things like that, which we're definitely going to be discussing throughout the course of this video. And you guys will have some insight into how we're moving forward with our brand, and you'll be able to see us build it in real time. And if you become a customer of ours, you'll be able to see that journey firsthand and truly get to experience what it is that we're creating. Now, to help you move the business plan to fruition, you're going to need a team. But before you start building a team, it's going to be key that you set structure to the processes and the things involved with the operation, and more importantly, identify the duties or responsibilities within each role. Now, if what I just said is a little confusing to you, let me break it down a bit. Now, the very first thing before you start building a team is to identify all the tasks associated with what it is that you're doing. Now, this means that to write down and list every single thing that you work on every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every year. I want you guys to be super detailed in this. And the reason that you want to do this is because you're going to identify all of the tasks associated with the business. Because the next thing that you want to do is you want to start to categorize some of these tasks. So let's say you're going to launch a product line. 
you know that to launch a product line, you need to take photography, right? You need to take photos, you might do some videos, you might do some editing work on Photoshop, you might work on some newsletters. There's a lot of tasks associated with launching a product line. So what you want to do is group every task into a role. So let's say that the product launch team is, is a role, right? And maybe it's somebody that has to be creative. You've identified that in order for you to build and grow your company, you need to step aside from some of the very nuanced things, such as taking those photos, editing those photos, putting out newsletters. And maybe you're the designer because that's your skill set. And now you can be focused on designing, and that person that you hire on can be focused on all of the things associated with launching a product. But you're going to do this for everything associated with the business, from ordering supplies to ordering samples to everything that's involved, logistics, shipping, literally every part of the business. You want to write down everything you're doing right now. And then you want to start to categorize those groups, bundle them into different roles. Now, the reason that you want to do this, I'll explain in a very short second. But for right now, start there. The next thing that you want to do is you want to identify everything that you're doing on a daily basis into three categories. Now, what I want you to do is take a piece of paper. Can you give me a piece of paper? A regular sheet of paper, right? And you want to carry this sheet of paper everywhere you go on a daily basis. Now, you're going to take a piece of paper and you're going to fold it into three columns. On this left side, you're going to note down things I should not be doing. On the middle side, you're going to note down things that I could play a role in. And on this right side, you're going to note down things I should be focused on in order to grow the business. Now, that piece of paper you're going to carry around in your back pocket, in your backpack, in your tablet, wherever you are. You're going to carry it everywhere you go. And anytime you work on a task, you have to classify that task. Is this a task that, should be, that you shouldn't be working on? So let's say you're sitting, you just got an order, and now you're packaging it. You're putting the little packing slip. You're checking the quality of it before it goes out. That is a task that you should not be focused on. It's an important <coughs> task in order for you to make the sale and get the money but it's not a task that you should be doing. So you're going to write that on the left column. When it comes to the middle column, things that you could play a role in, these are going to be things that are going to require your expertise, but aren't necessarily the things that you need to start from A to Z. Now, this could be things like editing a photo, right? Photo editing. Maybe